Hello, and welcome to the ADM Investor Services Weekly Market Kickoff. Please note that the views and opinions expressed here today are solely those of our guests and should not be construed as the views or opinions of ADM Investor Services or Archer Daniels Midland. Today's panelists are Alan Bush, our Senior Financial Economist, and Mark Soderberg, our Senior Ag Market Specialist. Let's start with Mark. Mark, what will the, be the key factors that drive agricultural markets this week? Well, uh, with, with no USDA reports this week, I think the market's key focus uh, will be whether or not we see any uh, kick up in demand here, particularly in U.S. corn following last week's drop uh, to fresh six-week lows. By late last week, Russia was offering lower protein wheat at price levels that were a discount to U.S. corn. I think that was the key factor that drove prices down to the 650 level, which is the lower end of the range that we've been suggesting. Uh, we've seen a little bit of a bounce overnight. However, this morning there were no export announcements from the USDA and prices have uh, moved down into lower lows. Uh, we've been expecting U.S. corn exports to run at a bit stronger pace than they have, at least in the first half of the marketing year, as Argentine supplies are going to be limited due to their drought uh, and delayed plantings. Uh, also in Brazil, as their second corn crop uh, is going in a little bit late as well. I think that only enhances that window for U.S. demand. But now if Russia is going to continue to aggressively undercut everyone else in the global feed grains, uh, then I think it's almost certain that we're going to see the USDA cut their corn export forecast again uh, next week in the USDA report on Wednesday. So that, that's one of the key things that I'll be watching for this week. Okay. And you, you were mentioning this already, but what's the latest crop update in South America? Uh, well, late last week, we saw further production cuts uh, to the Argentine, both their corn and soybean estimates from the Buenos Aires Grain Exchange. Uh, they cut their corn forecast another 3.5 million metric tons uh, and their soybean forecast by 4.5 million metric tons. The market seemed to take these uh, lower estimates in stride. Uh, the weather outlook uh, into the first full week in March now looks to a return to a, a hot, dry pattern. Uh, so really by the middle of March, weather no longer will matter a whole lot uh, as the crop is racing towards maturity. Uh, in Brazil, we've seen some uh, recent harvest updates that showed about a third of their soybean crop has been harvested so far uh, with a crop of probably just over 150 million metric tons, total volume being about 50 million metric tons. So Brazil j continues to undercut the U.S. in both soybeans uh, and soybean meal in price on the global marketplace. Uh, and in turn, because of the uh, slightly below normal pace to the uh, soybean harvest, corn plantings are going uh, in a little bit late as well, particularly across some of the Mid-South states, Paraná, uh, Mato Grosso do Sol. Uh, Mato Grosso seems to be going at a pretty good clip, and that is the biggest corn producing state. Uh, so all in all, a little bit delayed on the uh, corn plantings as well. Okay. And finally, for Mark, what's the latest with the CFTC's commitment of traders report? Uh, well, it's good news, bad news there. Uh, good news is they have started to resume uh, reporting this data. Uh, the bad news is they've uh, only reported uh, one week uh, of this data last Friday. So uh, in the last report, this is uh, as of the end of January, it did show the funds were holding a pretty sizable long position in Chicago uh, uh, soybean, soybean meal, uh, and in corn, and a sizable short position in the wheat. Uh, since then, I think these uh, long positions have gotten smaller, uh, while the short position in wheat has probably gotten bigger, if not a lot larger. Uh, the hope is that the the CFTC will be able to report a couple weeks of this lost data now uh, this coming Friday, but I would expect it to be by middle part of March before we're fully caught up uh, with a com commitment of traders reports. Thanks, Mark. Um, moving over to Alan. What is the current analyst consensus view on the outlook for stock index futures? Well, right now, it seems that there is a con consensus that is very bearish, very negative. And over the weekend, in the last few days, seems like almost everything that I hear or read has uh, negative overtones to it, uh, almost so much so that we could be in for a bit of a bounce to the upside. Uh, in fact, that could be the reason why we are seeing gains today in stock index futures, although we did get some support from the durable goods report. 
But overall, I think many analysts are too bearish right now, especially with uh, the recent weakness. So uh, it, it is likely that there will be some type of recovery gains, whether that continues uh, remains to be seen. But I think over the near term, I think we can see higher prices for stock index futures. Just way too many people, too many bank analysts, too many traders are bearish at this time. Okay. Uh, what are the most potentially market moving reports um, coming out this week? Okay. Well, of course, today we had durable goods that was weaker than expected, down four and a half percent. The guess was for down four percent. But, but tomorrow we'll have the February Consumer Confidence Index guessed at 108.5. Wednesday we'll have the February Purchasing Managers Manufacturing Index at 47.8. Also Wednesday, the February Institute for Supply Management Index at 48. And then on Friday, the February Purchasing Managers Composite guessed at 50.5, and the ISM Services Index also uh, on Friday guessed at 54.5. All right, Alan, and finally, what is the outlook for uh, industrial commodities? Well, first of all, Keep in mind that the Bloomberg Commodity Index fell below a triple bottom on the weekly chart at the beginning of this year. So that chart uh, looks very negative. And now that the Fed has become a bit more hawkish over the last uh, three or four weeks, I think we will probably see the industrial commodities, that would be the crude oil, copper, or even the lumber, I think will all trend lower. So uh, look for a weaker outlook for the uh, major industrial commodities uh, with what we're seeing on the charts and also in the fundamentals. All right. Thank you both. Remember, the views and opinions expressed here today on this video are solely those of our guests and should not be construed as the views or opinions of ADM, Investor Services, or ADM. If you'd like more information about our brokerage services, please visit ADMIS.com. Thank you.